hypothesis testing in dealing with awkward data. In this example, we have two samples which are clearly unpaired because the sample sizes are different. So we could carry out a Man Whitney U test on this data. However, if you come across an exam question that gives you this data in a different format, i.e. if it gives you data like this, the method involved in calculating the two U values that you need, yeah, the U value for sample A and sample B, will, be, will still be the same irrespective of which format the data is given to you in. For this table, I've worked out the, uh, the ranks for the data values, rank 1 for the smallest, and now I'm going to work out the total for the ranks. So these ranks add up to 14, and the ranks here for sample B add up to 14. Now we can do the same with uh, this format for the data. Again, giving rank 1 for the smallest data value, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And having the data in numerical order made the rankings easier. So now we're going to work out the total for sample A and the total of the ranks for sample B. So for sample A, there's sample A, so we've got 3. There's sample A there, so it's 5. And sample A, we've got 6. So they add up to 14. Exactly the same as the total for the ranks of A from this table. And then do the same with sample B. So that's a rank of 1 plus the 2 plus the 4, plus the 7, and these values for sample B also give us 14. That's just a coincidence in this question that the uh, totals were the same. They don't have to be. And then using the formula from page 14 in the formula book, we can calculate two U values for each sample. So the U value for sample A is equal to the total for sample A minus N, which is the sample size for sample A. There's three values. One, two, three values in uh, sample A. And we can do the same for sample B. Take the total, minus n is 1, 2, 3, 4. There are four values in sample B. 1, 2, 3, 4. And if you work out both of these, the u value for sample B is the uh, smallest out of the two values there. So this value here will become our test statistic. For the Kruskal Wallis test, you need multiple samples, at least three samples. In this example, we have four. So we could represent this data in an alternative way, like this. So you've got a single row with all the data in there, and uh, the row underneath tells you which sample the data value belongs to. So for example, we have three values for sample A. So there's a value for sample A here. There's the 2.1 sample A, 3.0 for sample A here, and that 4.8 is here for sample A. So the next step would be to rank all of the data together starting with uh, rank 1 for the smallest data value, so that's 2.1. So that's rank 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 
and we have 14 values here. And then work out the total for sample A, the total of uh, all the ranks for sample B, total for C, for D, and the sample size for each one, A's got three values, B four, C has three values, sample D has four values. So N, the total number of data values in the whole table, is 14. So capital then represents the total number of data values in the table, and the lowercase n represents the individual sample sizes for A, B, C and D. So all of the totals have been calculated, total for the ranks of sample A, so that's the 1 there, plus the 2, plus the 8, that's where that 11 came from. Do the same with B, C and D, and then apply the uh, Kruskal Wallis H formula from the formula book, which is uh, here. And that will give you your test statistic. But the key thing to learn here is that instead of having uh, four individual samples, it's possible that you've got a question where you're given data in this form and you're wondering what test to carry out. And just looking at the, uh, the labels for each data value, you've got a sample labeled A, there's one for B, there's one for C, there's one for D, there's four samples. The only test you can apply where you have at least three samples is the Kruskal Wallis test. So the data in this example has been given to you in an awkward way down here to deal with, perhaps something that you're not quite used to, and then you struggle when you come to data like this and you're wondering what test should I carry out? I mean they can just call this a distribution free test. Uh, it's still going to be the Kruskal Wallis test, there's uh, uh, four samples, and in the previous example, in this one, they did pretty much the same thing here. You've got two samples, but given to you in a single row. But by just looking at the labels here, you can tell it's just A or B here. So two samples there. It's going to be the Man Whitney U test. And the samples are of different sizes. They're not paired. Okay, next example. Testing for preference using the sign test. And the sign test is the only hypothesis test that deals with non-numerical data. The sign test for preference. 30 randomly chosen people were asked whether they prefer Weetabix, cornflakes, or neither for their breakfast. Five chose neither. 17 chose Weetabix, and the remainder chose cornflakes. And we're testing to see whether people prefer Weetabix over cornflakes. So those who chose neither, well, they don't really tell us anything, so ignore them. 17 were in favour of Weetabix, and 8 are against. So the smaller of the two values, which is 8, becomes our test statistic, and we can use the binomial distribution with a probability of 0 0.5 to carry out a sign test, and the number of trials here will be 17 plus 8, so 25. Okay, so ignore those which were neither leave those out. And from here onwards we have our test statistic, you've got your binomial distribution, you carry out the sign test as per normal. I'm not going to complete the rest of the test, the key thing here is how do you deal with testing for preference when data is given to you in this format, in an awkward way.